once upon a time, that rural boy was living in a remote village in a place called Mondorongezi, deep rural areas in Zimbabwe. That house built of sticks was called a side plate because our disabled mother was sleeping the other side, me and my siblings on the other side. In that house, trust me, you were not able to dream of a better life. All that we're dreaming about is food and shoes on our feet. In that house, nothing good was coming out of that house. And trust me, in that village, all we were known about was begging for food. But, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you through how I transformed my rural life into a tourist center. The village boy, all that he knew was he had in cattle for his grandfather. But that little boy was brilliant and intelligent in school. He would walk nine kilometers to school and crossing two dangerous rivers just to get to school. But his dreams were shattered because of his background and his way of life and the way he was living. At the age of four, at the age of five, you're supposed to go and fetch for food for yourself and for the disabled mother. You can imagine the life living in a deep rural area in Zimbabwe. The food for thought for today is, can rural solutions change national, regional, and global food system problems? The story of Kwateri, Mondorongezi, Zimbabwe. The picture that you see there is me with the two cattle that were owned by my grandfather. All we knew was farming on a daily basis, but we didn't have the inputs to do the farming. Yes, you're farming, but you don't have the inputs. The result is hunger. Fast forward, 2008, I was home because I had failed my ordinary level exams. That's equivalent to grade nine in South Africa. I had zero subjects. So the result was I was supposed to go back home and be a cattle herder because I had no life, future life, nothing. The dreams were shattered because I had failed my exams. Now I went back home. Two years, I was sitting at home. I remember the other time I was digging these um, Blade toilets, pits for people in the village. That was my job back in the village. But could anything positive come out of the village? If I was to ask you at the time that, do you see myself attracting attention of thousands and millions of people across the globe? You are not going to believe me. 2010, I returned back to school. I passed with 11 subjects, proceeded to the University of Zimbabwe and grabbed a degree in political science. But like many other youths in Zimbabwe, after graduating in 2016, I started serious job hunting. Now, with political science, I couldn't find a job within my trade. Then I was hired at a furniture shop. I started working as a shop attendant at a furniture shop. But the salary would come maybe after four months, two months, four months, and now I was staying in town. But mind you, back in the village, there is a disabled mother. That mother is looking at you as now as the head of the house. You're supposed to fend for the family. The other time I was in town and I started crying because I had received groceries from my mother back in the village because I couldn't even pay for my rentals. I couldn't even buy shoes for myself because the salaries were not coming. 2017, I was here. I went back to the rural areas with my four-month salary. I bought the Roadrunner Chicks 
to start my Roadrunner project. But the day when I arrived in the village, I looked at my mother and she said, are you serious that you came back to the rural areas to do this? We failed to be good farmers because we didn't have the inputs. And you are now back. You are not employed. And you are now saying you are now a full-time farmer. Do you think you are going to succeed? I was here. I remember the other time, the first time that I posted this picture on social media, people started laughing at me. There were so many what ifs. Someone comes and lights this foul and beauty of grass. What's going to happen? That was me in 2017 starting the Roadrunner project. In 2018, I had over 2,000 beds on the ground. But this boy, he has a background of political science. He doesn't know how to market himself whatsoever. You just have beds on the ground and you just have pride and say, I have thousands of beds, but how then am I going to market them? If someone passes by the house and says, I think next week I'm going to come and buy your beds, you'll be following him every day. Are you still coming? Because you still need to buy feed for the beds. And at the same time, you want to earn a living out of the beds. That was just me, 2018. But for me to post on Facebook, I remember there was a big guy who was also doing beds on Facebook. So to me, it was an intimidating scenario for me. I then started posting on Twitter. And for you guys, if you know Twitter, it's not a good place for you to do this. <laughs> but I started posting. I remember getting one like, two likes, 10 retweets going up. In the middle of 2018, June, one guy called me and came and bought 400 beds. I remember I was just there stuck and say, God, is this really happening? 2019, beginning of 2019, things started shaping up. People started knowing that this guy does chickens. And I was just posting two likes, three duties as, the, as it is. 2019, as a thanksgiving to the community, I had to say to myself on Christmas, I need to give back to the community. I incubated 966 chicks. Then I said, anyone who wants to start a Roadrunner project in 2020, please come and get the chicks for free. I got thousands of messages, people demanding the chicks. So on Christmas 2019, that was a big day for me. People came in their numbers and we had to share the little that we had from this project from the rural areas. But that was a wake up call for me because I started seeing the need for the people in Zimbabwe to do these projects. If you're doing something, you won't understand how but the situation is just across the road. Someone will be suffering, but that person won't come to you and say, my brother, I'm suffering. You only realize that when you present an opportunity to that person. People came in their numbers, and I said to myself, beginning of 2020, if I get a customer every single week, if I incubate chicks, if I get a customer, I'm going to give one person free chicks. Ladies and gentlemen, by the end of 2020, I had given 111 youths free chicks in Zimbabwe. People coming in their numbers to get the beds. Oh, well, I had upgraded from the house of, made of wood. That was my bedroom now. <laughs> that, was a, that was an upgrade. Yeah. So that was me uh, in 2020 constructing another forward. After realizing that people now know that this guy from rural areas, I stay close to 200 kilometers from the capital city, Harare. But people were now driving to the rural areas to see the chicken project. With the small amounts of money coming, I decided to drill a ball. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, the day that I drilled this ball, I sat there the whole night just celebrating myself that I've drilled a ball. To me, that was big. This was a big 
this was the biggest, was, was, this was the peak of my life, was I drew the ball. I remember people in my village coming, queuing to get safe water from this particular ball. And to myself, that was a big achievement. I'm sure I can see my bedroom behind, big upgrade. But people were driving miles and miles coming to the rural areas to see the project that I was doing in the rural areas. And because of this ball, and my thousands of beds, different colors, I started a massive garden to produce vegetables in the village. Trust me, we supplied construction companies, we supplied schools, we supplied restaurants, we dried some of the veggies, we started packing them and selling to the market from this big garden. From this garden only, I managed to employ five people from my village. And seeing my people celebrating my success in the village because of this particular garden was a big achievement for me. That's the backyard, green vegetables. We supplied every single day. We made sure we get people vegetables, fresh vegetables, every single day. That's me celebrating my success. <laughs> After realizing that I've been successful, a little bit successful in the chickens and the garden, it started as a joke when I was telling my mother that I think I need to do butter trade with the people in the villages. I give you the chickens, you give me the goats. So we started trading. From this butter trade, I, I, I got around 35 goats. That was a big start for me. So you come, I give you the chickens, you give me the goats. That was the deal in the village. To date, I have close to 200 goats in the village because of this project. That's not enough. People started coming in numbers to the village to see what I was doing. And remember, I was doing all this posting on Twitter. But don't forget the question. Can rural solutions solve national, regional, and global food system problems? I was posting all this journey on Twitter. And when people come in their numbers to the village to see what I was doing, what I would do with my guys and my mother, we would cook for people for free, we eat, you move around, you appreciate what you're doing, then we go. But then, that was not enough. How was I going to monetize the village? These people coming and eating for free and go. How then are we going to benefit from this huge traffic of people coming to the village? In 2021, I was seated at home and I said to my brother, I think I need to build a restaurant, first of its kind in, the, in Zimbabwe. I looked at him and he couldn't believe me, and he said to me, this is not going to work. Don't confuse people who are coming to see the chickens with the clients. Because of that, he's one guy that I trust. But because he said those words, I say to myself, this means I'm not going to share this idea with anyone. Because the moment that I come to you, your vision is in IT. You are not seeing the farming side of the world. The moment I share something with you, you are not going to support my idea. So what I would do, I would just move like a dog. I don't share my idea. I don't share where I'm going. 2022, in May, he woke up my brother and he saw me, I was pegging how to start building the restaurant. In May, I started building the restaurant with him and the other two guys that were employed. And we came up with the first rural restaurant in Zimbabwe called Kwateri. Now the idea was, instead of selling our roadrunner at $7 or $10, if we can slaughter and cook this, we can put value addition to our product. Probably we're going to get $15 more, or we're going to get a dollar more. It's worth it. I'm known in Zimbabwe as a supplier of red runner chicks, as a breeder. But most of the times you send someone 500 chickens, they die on the way, or you might somewhere, somehow, 
be careless in caring at the chickens and they die and the blame comes back to the supplier. And I say to my brother, this has to stop. We are going to keep our beds, sell as road runner meat or cook at the restaurant at our own price, at our own pace, at our own time. Then I had to set up the restaurant. So now, that's the restaurant. So, we have our sitting place that we called our friend Seko. We dug a hole and people come and sit there. We have our upstairs and we have our big gazebo where people come and chill, having our rural vibes. This is the setup of Kwateri. We have the restaurant at the top. We have the goats. We have the roadrunners. We have the garden. We are feeding the restaurant. We are also feeding the market. We have attracted attention of thousands to millions of people to see this model. This is the picture that I took last week when it had hundreds of bikers coming across Zimbabwe to come and have a rural feel at our restaurant. We are now calling it an experience. You come to the village. We take you through the stages or our processes that we do in the village. This doesn't only serve as a restaurant, but this is a selling point for the villages. You bring your veggies, you bring your chickens, you bring your goats, you bring whatever that you think is cultural. We sell for you at the restaurant. What it has done is we have created a village economy subconsciously. We didn't know that you were creating it, but now up to date, we have employed 25 people, full-time workers in the village. But on our busy days, we can even rise to 35 or 40 people. But on busy days, we have people that we hire every weekend to come and help us serve the customers. <laughs> Cars parked at the outside parking because the inside was full. This is last week, Sunday. People are now coming in their numbers to witness what is happening 200 kilometers away from the capital city. But... Do all the people in the rural areas have social media to do what I'm doing? If we can have only one Terence in a village, we can solve how many problems? We can replicate this model in Mpumalanga, we can replicate this model in any rural area. That setup stands as a selling point for all the rural farmers around. What I know is most of the problems that we have in this world are found in the villages. Believe me, in my village, we have people who are taking Christ or meth. In the rural areas, we have people who are taking all kinds of drugs. Why? Because they are unemployed? Because they didn't go to school. But these people have power, have the zeal, have the knowledge. What they don't have is the direction. They just need someone, a leader, to take them through to the promised land. If we can have this model replicated across Southern Africa, we can solve a thousands of problems. Trust me, I remember the other time one donor came with chickens to donate to our village. The village had was given the chicks, I think about a thousand. And he said, we are going to group you into 10 people, then we give you about 20. But as soon as the donors left, each person was taking only two chicks to, the, to his house. That very day marked the end of the project before it even started. Why? The projects are not being monitored. You come and give people broilers and expect them to sell for themselves. But these people, these are subsistence farmers. They only know how to farm for food. But for the project to be an ongoing thing, it needs someone who can lead at the front, give them direction. We solve millions of problems. We're talking about an Onino. We know, currently in Zimbabwe, we know there are no rains. What it means for next year is a serious drought. 
what it means is a huge burden on the WFP guys because you're supposed to go and give relief to the people. But giving people chicks to start broiler projects, roadrunner projects, is a good idea. But if it clicks direction and monitoring, it dies at the inception stage. Ladies and gentlemen, my belief is we can win. We didn't only host people. We hire people in the village to come help us save top flight football teams in Zimbabwe. They come in their numbers. This is me at my billboard. I take pictures every day <laughs> just to celebrate myself. And this is the village. This is the original village. People, we don't edit anything. We give people a rural, a complete rural experience. You come, we put you in a, a cart driven by donkeys. We give you a village tour. We have people that we have. I don't have donkeys, but I have people that I pay to come and give people the services. People in the villages, when they know they want to sell their chickens, this is the selling point. What I've done in the village, I have given every household free chicks to start their own roadrunner projects. Why? Because we need a constant supply of roadrunner meat at the restaurant. You keep your chickens, but when you want to sell, you sell to us. So that it keeps on going in the village. But if it's happening in my village, village six, it can happen in the next village one, in village 20, in the region, in Africa, in the whole world. Because we don't want to give attention to the top. Let's solve the problems at the grassroots. That's where most of the problems are. I believe we will win. Thank you so much.